And now, from the jungle room at Graceland, the only man to be blacklisted from the blacklist, Dirty Dan Smith. Hey, Chili Bowl fans, it's time for day number three of the Indy Race Parts Chili Bowl Spotlight Show on the Performance Motorsports Network on the Cushion Media Group, Burning Rubber Radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we got a lot of talk, lot to talk about today. Uh, our boy Shane Cottle last night uh, picked up a second place in his heat. He won his qualifier in a sixth in the A main. Not sure where the points are stacking up. We'll have to check in with him today and see if that puts him into the A main on Saturday night. Uh, tonight, we got firing off. We have Shane Golbick and Joe Lagore. He's going to be racing tonight, so we'll uh, going to be talking to them today. But our boy, the throttle, Shane Cottle, overcomes that turning the car upside down in Monday practice and has a damn good night last night. I'll tell you another, Sunshine Tyler Courtney was pretty impressive last night, too. So uh, we'll get this show started, and we'll be right back after these messages. If you're a gearhead, you probably go online to those hot rod superstores, drooling over the chrome and speed goodies until you find just the right item for your muscle car, tuner car, or truck. But what do you do when it comes to fixing the mom mobile? If you're like most do-it-yourselfers, you head to the strip all parts store and talk to the Do you want fries with that kid behind the counter? Hold on, Bunky! Did you stop to think where those chain stores are getting the parts that you're installing in the vehicle that's used to transport your family everywhere? They get the cheapest suppliers they can find to sell you the parts at bargain prices. Their limited lifetime warranties? What a joke! Remember the last time Mom's car broke down? You heard about that one for weeks. Don't take that chance again. Excelsior Racing has the quality parts you need for your family vehicle. Parts that you can install knowing you're getting the best for your family. Excelsior Racing. Quality parts. Personalized service. Affordable pricing. Fast to you direct. Excelsior Racing. Online at ExcelsiorRacing.com or call 502-909-2034. And we're back on the on the Cushion Media Group, Burning Rubber Radio, on the Performance More Motorsports Network for the Indy Race Parts Chili Bowl Spotlight Show, day number three. And uh, this next guest, he uh, fires off tonight, and I can't wait, man, because I, I, I want to see how this cat does this week. But Mr. Shane Golbick, we still don't have a nickname for you, but how you doing this morning, my man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's uh, tomorrow tonight. I'm excited. So we're getting ready to go right now, and I think uh, later tonight will be good. Now, you said uh, when I called you, you said you was grooving tires, man. I thought you was going to hang up on me and tell me never to call you again, man. But any, any secrets <laughs> to grooving those tires? Uh, no, no, no special secrets. I don't know. Um, just, uh, get a couple of extra cuts in there and get a little extra grip and, um, I don't know, nothing special. I, I don't do this, uh, measure racing enough to know any special secrets, but <laughs> I kind of look, I've been kind of looking around studying other people's tires a little bit and I'm just going to kind of do my own version of what everybody else is doing. So now let's, let's talk about that just for a minute, man. Cause that's, a, that's an interesting thing at a dirt track, man. Everybody's got their, you know, and they've got their own way of, of grooving, you know, a certain pattern or, or certain cuts and siping at a certain amount and things like that. Do you have anything that you normally do like with the sprint car or anything? Um, you know, I don't know. We, we seem to, uh, you know, try to keep it light on the cuts. You can get it to where it's, it's too siped up or too grooved up to where, you know, you're taking too much rubber off the tire and it, uh, it's actually going to hurt you in the long run. So right. it's kind of it's kind of a balancing act to to find you know just the right amount and in the right directions and everything and um, making sure you don't siphon it up too much and and create you know some issues for you later in the race. So it's kind of a balancing act. I don't know. It, it, you know it's it's hard to say you know if there's a perfect pattern um, that works better than the others, but um, everybody has their own theories. <laughs> that, that they do, man. When it comes to tires, there's all kinds of theories out there. That's a fact. Yeah. It's, all, it's all about them sharp edges, man, making sure they're sharp and, and square and not rounded over. Huh? That's right. <laughs> all right, man. Let's get to talking about tonight, man. If you flip that switch from Shane Golbick, everyday mild-mannered man, to uh, Super Shane, the racing man. Um. Yeah, this, well, for me, there's not a huge difference between uh, between racing Shane and fan Shane, I guess. Uh, I try to keep you know the same, same even head of all times it seems to help me out a lot uh, if i get myself too amped up it, it uh causes some issues so i just try to keep it keep it light keep it fun and uh usually it, it works out best for me there so uh, i'm pretty much ready to go I, I don't think uh i'm not i'm not feeling any nerves or anything i might feel a little bit later but um i'm, I'm just ready to go i'm excited you, you know you say that and, and that's the absolute truth every time i've talked to you we've talked i don't know we've we've done several interviews and and talked uh to each other 
uh, you know, off air several times since we've met here in the last month and a half, two months or so. But at, at any rate, man, you're always calm, cool, and collected. I think we need to nickname you Ice or something like that, man. It needs to be something like that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. All right, man, you watched, uh, you, you had the day of practice. We talked about that. And, and then, uh, we had some racing last night, man. We had some heat races, some, some, uh, qualifiers and, and we had the race of champions last night. Um, I was watching on racingboys.com last night. Uh, that, that cushion, man, it looked pretty treacherous down there in three and four last night. Uh, tell me what you thought about the track, that curb. Let's talk about that curb. Um, uh, but yeah, tell, yeah. tell me what you thought, man. Um, yeah, like you said, the curb was a little tricky. You, you could see the, the guys knew what they were doing that uh, rose to the top of the, the feature last night. Um, and it, the bottom was just as tricky. It, it, uh, it got real slow and, and, uh, like a typical chili bowl, you have, you have to go real slow on the bottom or just, you know, really rip the cushion on the top. And, um, it seems like the, the in, infield berms a little bit, uh, a little bit sketchy this year too. Uh, if you get your left side up on it and it causes a lot of issues and saw a couple guys get real out of shape. And so that's something you got to, got to remember but uh yeah the cushion um you know it got up there the track got real wide and slick up to a cushion enough room to you know i saw some some people throwing some side jobs to get by guys and uh, i thought the track was really good last night it, it got wide and it didn't get to where you know the, the cushion got up to where it needed to be and it kind of stuck there it didn't really you know just keep going all the way to the fence to where you know it's too long of a way around so i thought they did a really good job on the track last night I, I thought the same thing. I thought the track was really racy, and, and like you said, the cushion just kind of it kind of sit in right there. It was almost like a a motocross type type rut. You know, you, you understand what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. It dug in and stuck, and and like you said, it didn't move up to the fence like like we're used to seeing, uh, you know, with ter- typical dirt races. So uh, you could really get a bite off four. There was a lot of cars launching off that off four where it was really digging in. But let's t- if if you don't mind, Shane, let's talk a little more about this berm because. To me, that was the big story last night, you know, in a lot of the heat races that caused some issues. And as the night wore on, you know, the guys, you know, everybody kind of started working around it. And, you know, like you said, the cream rose to the top and knew how to use it. But it is a little different this year, the way it's sucking the cars up. And then and then when you try to overcorrect, shooting you back across the track. Um, are you thinking yeah. about any of that on the low line tonight? I mean, ha- have you had a chance to play around with it yet? Um, yeah, well, on my first practice set on Monday, I kind of, uh, you know, I, I kind of shook the rust off a little bit, and I, I was actually up on the berm a couple times, you know, d- didn't really want to go there, but the car just kind of, you know, hooked up and get, went down there, so I kind of had to feel that out. In the second set, I got used to running the bottom a little bit better. And, you know, I'm real comfortable on the top um, as well, so I, you're going to be able, you're going to have to be able to go, you know, top and bottom tonight uh, to get around guys, so it's just going to be, you know, being able to change your mindset if you if you're you know committing to the bottom you got to commit to being patient slowing the car down getting it in the, the moisture on the bottom and getting off the corner in the moisture and then if you're going to the top you just gotta change your mindset to you know be on the hammer and get get up against the cushion and and uh get get that big drive off the corner like uh, you're talking about so it's gonna now, be uh you know it's gonna take a lot of a lot of uh patience and you know smarts to be able to run the top and bottom is there anything that you that you got to do setup wise to to get you know we got a lot of rookie stripers out there and you know we got a lot of NASCAR fans that listen so they're used to hearing about adjustments you know what I mean low line high line yeah. things like that so it, with the midget and and the way you're talking you're gonna have, you're gonna have to be able to go where other guys aren't is there anything setup wise with the midget uh, for those people out there that don't quite understand setups on these cars. Um, that you can do to make the car neutral versus the high line, low line, things like that? Or is it just throw a setup on it, get it to bite, and let's go? You know, talking about, like, gear changes, things like that. Um, yeah, you know, you, I wouldn't change the gear. You want to be able to have enough gear to get you off the corner at low speed on the bottom and to get you off the corner at a little bit higher speed off the top. So you kind of just find, like, a mid-range and, and on the gear. And then as far as the setup, you kind of do the same thing. You just make sure you're – um, tight enough at the end of the race, so you might be a little bit uncomfortable um, too tight at the beginning of the race when there's a lot of moisture on the track. But it's all about um, being good at the end. So you want to get your car tight enough to be, you know, really good at the end on the top or bottom. Um, and then, you know, and during the race, these midgets have uh, a lot of the guys have cockpit adjustable uh, shocks, so you can, you know, you can change change your shocks a little bit according to what you need and what you feel like you're, you know, where you're lacking on the corners and that kind of thing trying to dial your car in a little bit, uh, which is big here. You've seen, you know, guys like Sammy Sundell, he's like, he's the best at that. He, uh, you know, the first five laps of the race, his car could look terrible. And then 
all of a sudden, you know, he's going to work on those knobs and, you know, a couple of laps later, he's going to the front again. So um, that's a big deal right there. You definitely have to, you know, know what to do with the shocks and when to do it and, and you know, just dial your car in as you go, um, as the track changes. So someone who can do that is going to be able to uh, do really well here. It's really well. Now, you're talking about that, and like I said, again, for the rookie stripers out there, there's a knob inside the car that's that's uh, kind of like a, a little dial, turns clockwise. Uh, well, most of them that I've seen anyway. You know, I know yeah. some guys have levers and things like that, but most of them are knobs that you just turn clockwise or counterclockwise. And and basically what you're doing is messing with rebound and, and uh, things like that in the shock, softening them up, I guess in layman's terms, making it softer or a little harder on the shock, correct? Right, yeah, you you can take, you know, rebound out of the front, so it'll let the front kind of pop up a little bit, and it'll help you, you know, get get a little bit more forward drive off the corner, and if, if you're, you know, you can do some stuff with the rear, too, to, to help the attitude of the car, however you need to, so um, you could you could set your, your car up, you know, a little bit off to start the race, and um, you could actually fix it out, on, out there on the track if, if, you know, if your adjustability on your shocks is, is good enough, so. Um, I feel like our car has got, you know, we, I've been running factory cane shocks the uh, last few years on this midget, and uh, I've been working close with Willie Kane. He's helped me out a lot, and uh, I think the shock package we brought here this year is pretty pretty darn good, and I can, uh, I got a full range of adjustability out there, so I think um, as long as I can, you know, dial myself in, but not to where, you know, I go too far or anything, it'll be, it'll be really good. Right. I, I'm sorry, Shane, to spend so much time on that, man. I know it's a lot of technical stuff, and we're kind of trying to, uh, knock it down a little bit so so you know the majority of people can understand and and i just wanted to get it out there you know you guys are adjusting knobs in the cockpit trying to make decisions on what the car needs to do all on this little bitty chili bowl track when your front ends up in the air down the straightaways you know what i mean so um you, you're very busy inside that cockpit during the race without a doubt uh, now moving on through the racing that we saw last night i know you talked you know in in vague terms about what you've seen track conditions wise but in your mind uh, do you see your heat race played out? I, I know you don't know where you're lining up or who's in your heat or anything like that yet. You guys haven't true pills yet. But do do you see the heat race in your mind yet? Have you pictured it, or do you do things like that? Um, yeah, I kind of try to, you know, game plan a little bit for for uh, what's going to be coming up throughout the night. Uh, I know that the racetrack will be faster and uh, and a little bit more narrow during the heat races, and Hoping, I'm hoping that, you know, I get a good draw from the kill draw and maybe get a heat race that's, you know, you don't want a heat race that has all the best guys in it. That makes it a lot harder on yourself. So if you can maybe get, get a little luck and, you know, get a couple guys who you, you might be a little bit better than and that start in front of you and you could, you know, get around them and get some passing points, that'll be good. So, um, I, you know, watching the heat races last night, the track actually wind up pretty good um, compared to following or previous years. Um, so if, if the track's similar to like it was last night, I think we're going to be really good and it'll be uh, pretty racy in the heat races, you know, wide enough to where you can make some moves um, that you need to around, you know, slower, slower cars. So. That, that's a fact, man. It got racy quick last night. I, I, I agree with you there. It, it did get really racy real quick. Um, looking at, at, at who was racing last night. Uh, one of our, one of our, I guess, show teammates, we could call him <laughs> Shane Cottle had a pretty yeah. good night last night. Uh, after uh, you know turning it over Monday in practice and and picks up a second a win and then a sixth in the A, uh, so he, he run pretty well last night. But then in the race of champions, we've seen both Swindells on the back and they really never done anything. Uh, I, I know a lot of people are excited about the Swindells being at the back, but I, I personally think they were just laying back. We're going to see Sammy roll off tonight uh, along with you and Joe Lagori, you know, amongst other people. But uh, what what did you think of the race of champions last night and Separate of the race of champions, out of what you've seen last night, who do you think uh, uh, looked good last night? And uh, Tyler Courtney was another surprise last night, personally for me, in the shell shot car. But uh, who who do you see? Did you see anything that kind of um, said, "Oh, oh we got to watch this guy," or "Wow, you know he's not doing so good"? You, you see what I'm saying? You understand what I'm asking? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, as far as the Swindells, um, you know they they didn't look the greatest last night. I think Kevin was going really good at the beginning of that race of champions, and he ended up looping it. Um, but I wouldn't read too much into that. Those guys are going to figure it out. They do every year. So uh, they're going to be at the front. Sammy's going to be the guy to beat tonight. That's for sure. So um, I'm not worried about them as far as they're going to be up in the front, no matter what. Um, and then, you know, a guy who really impressed me, who uh, his car looked really good was uh, Brian Clawson in the race of the champions. He, he started at the tail of that thing and 
you know, I think he got up to fifth or so, and then he got caught up in a wreck and had to go back to the back, and then he drove back up to eighth or something. But, and, you know, he's not passing any sodges out there on that racetrack uh, with the, the race champion. So he's passing a lot of good cars. His car looked really good. So he'll be a guy to look after uh, for sure. And then, yeah, Tyler Courtney looked really good. I felt bad for him last night. He had some motor issues there. I'm uh, running third in the future. It's kind of heartbroken for him, but uh, hopefully they get that thing figured out and he'll be able to make a little alphabet soup happen on Saturday. So <laughs> the we'll alphabet see. soup, man, that's where nobody wants to be. That's for sure. You start, yeah. I, I don't know, man. You know, KK features and and all kinds of stuff. You know, but hey, uh, you know, you you brought that up about Brian coming through the field in the race of champions. Then in the feature last night. We've seen Larson come from, what was it, 16th to uh, 5th, and then we've seen, uh, yeah. to me, the story, you know, the guy on the move last night was Timez, man. I mean, he come from 20th up to 7th last night, or 6th. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's one thing. Timez, he, he gasses that thing up, and, he's you know, he's not in, you know, one of the newest, nicest cars here, that's for sure, and he, he wheeled that thing right to the front. He was kind of, you know, follow, almost following Kyle through there a little bit early and got up. I think he finished 7th. It's, it's pretty strong showing for that team. Yeah, it is. That and that's my that, that leads into the question I want to ask you. After you seeing in Brian do you know, B C do it in the race of champions and then uh T Mez and, and Young Money doing it in the A feature, does that make you feel pretty confident that if you are towards the back you make it to the A feature tonight or even in your heat races, uh you, you make you start towards the back, does that give you a little bit of confidence that the track's there, uh, you know, that that you're gonna be able to, to work your way to the front? Yeah, that's def- that's definitely a, a you know confidence booster. Knowing that even if you make a little mistake, you know the track's going to be there to to where you can you can fight your way back forward if if you need to. And um, seeing those guys, you know those guys are really really good here, and um, I like to think that I, I'm pretty good here too. So if uh, if I ever find myself you know deep in the feature, I'll uh, it, it, it feels good to know that someone's you know been able to go up to the front, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to do that too if, if need be. I, I think you're selling yourself a little bit short, short there, Shane. You're doing good. I was <laughs> chilly bowl, man. So, uh, all right, man. Uh, you know, we do this every day, man. Uh, time to spit out who's writing the checks and, and get them all important sponsors out there, man. I know I know. I ask you every day, man, but it's it's that time again. Yeah, yeah, they deserve to be thanked every day, that's for sure. I got to thank Doug, Doug Bach and Fred Hubbard for uh, getting this car together for me for, uh, for the chilly bowl this year. Um, and then also got to thank Chris McKim and, and Bill Fosman are there. Uh, they've been out here with me all week, um, you know, getting the car ready, helping me out of practice. And, and my dad and grandpa are flying in uh, today. They should be here around 3 o'clock just before we start racing. And uh, Dad's usually the crew chief on this, this deal, so uh, hopefully he'll be able to help me out and get this thing dialed in. Uh, so i got to definitely thank them. And, uh, and then, yeah, I just got to thank everybody out here who's helping us and uh, supporting us and rooting us on. We've had a lot of guys come by and, and uh, wish me luck and everything for for tonight and the whole week. So uh, it means a lot to me for sure. That that's pretty cool, man. When when you know you you've made a name for yourself, Shane. There without a doubt. Hey, one more question before we get out of here that just entered my mind. You and I uh, have had the conversation about the specialized lightweight chili bull cars uh, versus like yeah. the car you're running, which is just a normal chassis. You know, I I was paying attention a little bit in the in the racing last night. And you and I had talked that there's more people that brought the lightweight cars out there this year. And you could kind of see it a little bit um, with these cars. I, I'm thinking of the hard eight cars, what I'm thinking about uh, last night. I mean, you know, watching him in the heat race and, uh, uh, you know, and, and in the feature. Those, what is the advantage to those lightweight cars? I mean, I know without getting into, you know, long te- technical terms, um, kind of what I've seen from layman's point of terms is those cars get up and off the turns really damn well there's no lag in them is is that the major yeah. advantage to them um yeah you know a lighter car you're gonna be able to you know you need you need less motor to get the thing up and going again it's just kind of basic physics and you know a lighter car is gonna you know you're gonna be able to move a lighter car a lot easier than you would a, a heavy car so that's uh definitely something that's helping those guys and i know a lot of guys are, are changing you know some kind of pickup points on their on their frames, you know, trying to add as much grip as they can because you could pretty much, you know, you can never have too much grip here at the Chili Bowl, um, you know, well, to an extent, I guess. But, um, yeah, a lot of these guys with their their special Chili Bowl cars have, uh, have, have really got to figure it figured out and have their cars really digging. Um, but I don't think that means you couldn't get that same effect with, you know, a standard car. So that's going to be our goal tonight. We're going to we're gonna bring our just standard car and try to 
you know, race up there with Sammy. But uh, his special Chili Bowl car, I think, I think it, we're capable for sure. So uh, uh, I know you. I know you're more than capable, man. I can't wait for the racing to start tonight. We'll be hollering at you. I was yelling at the computer last night uh, during Shane's <laughs> runs last night. And Tyler Courtney, I, I, I like Sunshine, man. We, you know, we've done some things with Sunshine. And, and besides that, he's running, uh, you know, the Shell Shock uh, banner, you know, this week. And and Noah's yeah. a good friend of mine. So, but uh, at any rate, man, we're going to get out of here, and we'll call you tomorrow morning, and and hopefully we're calling you, and uh, you picked up a preliminary night win. I, I think you're more than capable of doing it, my man. And and uh, you be safe out there. Race hard. Keep at least the right rear on the ground, all right? <laughs> okay, yep. Sounds good. All right, man. You take care, Shane. We'll, we'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. All right that was Shane right, Goldwick out at the Chili Bowl Nationals getting ready for his race in the night. We'll be back right after these commercials. If you're a gearhead, you probably go online to those hot rod superstores, drooling over the chrome and speed goodies until you find just the right item for your muscle car, tuner car, truck. But what do you do when it comes to fixing the mom mobile? If you're like most do-it-yourselfers, you head to the strip mall parts store and talk to the do you want fries with that kid behind the counter. Hold on, Bunky! Did you stop to think where those chain stores are getting the parts that you're installing in the vehicle that's used to transport your family everywhere? They get the cheapest suppliers they can find to sell you the parts at bargain prices. Their limited lifetime warranties? What a joke! Remember the last time mom's car broke down? You heard about that one for weeks. Don't take that chance again. Excelsior Racing has the quality parts you need for your family vehicle. Parts that you can install knowing you're getting the best for your family. Excelsior Racing. Quality parts. Personalized service. Affordable pricing. Fast to you direct. Excelsior Racing. Online at ExcelsiorRacing.com or call 502-909-20. All right, race fans, Chili Bowl fans, worldwide, man. Yeah, I like to think we're worldwide. All the dogs and cats in my neighborhood listen to the show. Anyway, it's Dirty Dan. We're back on on the Cushion Media Group, Burning Rubber Radio on the Performance Motorsports Network. We just got done talking to Shane Golbick out at the 2014 Chili Bowl Nationals about what he's going uh, uh, doing heading into tonight's racing. And on the phone, we have one of my Indiana buddies, Mr. Joe Ligori on the phone. How you doing this morning, Joe? Oh, pretty good. Just uh, getting up and moving right now and ready for another exciting day at the racetrack. We need to come up with a nickname for you, too. Shane, don't. Golbick don't have a nickname, and you don't have a nickname that I know of. Do you have one? Yeah, they they, they call me Jolton Joe Liguori. I guess I'm, I'm a good baseball player or something or taking his name. I... There you go. Okay. All right. Jolton Joe. That's it. Right now, I'm going to start spreading that everywhere, man. So, uh, uh, Jolton right. Joe Liguori. <laughs> All right, man. All right, let's let you, have you, you haven't had your breakfast sandwich yet, so uh, you're you're not even uh, you're not even awake. It was a long night at the track last night. Let's talk about uh, the track last night before we talk about what you're doing today to get ready to run uh, tonight. Uh, what did you notice? What was the big story for you last night uh, with all the racing there? Man, it, the track turned, looked out pretty good at the beginning, and then it started getting kind of choppy, and it it really kind of smoothed out after it got real wide. I mean, it got it got real wide and got slick. The bottom looked okay. It looked like if you can roll the bottom and keep it, keep your momentum up and just get good forward drive, that uh, the bottom could be all right. But I mean, the, the fastest way was right up on the cushion, right up, right up, literally on the fence. I mean, they're probably maybe a car width off the fence there. I mean, the, for such a small track, it can get real wide. You know, I, I was noticing that last night. We'll kind of break this down. Let's break it down to low line, high line, and let's start off with the low line. That berm this year, man, it, it's it's a big story this year. There's there's a lot of guys that's having issues with that berm, and it caused a lot of problems in the heat races last night. Yeah, you know, it kind of settled itself down as the night went on. Um, but we, you and I talked about that berm yesterday, as a matter of fact. After the racing last night, what do you think about that? I mean, is that something that's going to be in your mind that you got to keep that left front off that? I mean, it looks like if you can get the left front just a little bit on it, it's all right. It just kind of helps pull you around. But if you get it too much and then get the left rear on it, it just really upsets the car because a lot of the guys were really kind of keeping things straight running the bottom, just kind of huggy pulling it with just the left front barely up on the berm. I mean, you don't want to really get on it too hard because it just upsets the car and slows you down a bunch. That, that's what I noticed last night. You know, when they get up on it too far, it, it, they overcorrect, shoot the car out. There's a few wrecks, you know, from, from people on the berm, and it just kind of, you know, the chain effect up the track, and, and, you know, somebody ended up on their lid a couple times. But... Um, you know, okay, we're talk we've crossed that and, and you know I've spent a lot of time talking about that berm down there. 
Now let's move up to the high side. The cushion kind of set in and it got deep. It, it, it was almost like a rut, but it never moved out to the wall. Once it set, it kind of stayed, which I found kind of odd, you know, because on dirt tracks, we're used to that cushion just continually moving up, moving up, you know, until you're against the wall. But uh, the track rep I thought was pretty good last night. I seen what you seen, you know, a little choppy and then it smoothed out, got wide and racy. But uh, what do you think about how the cushion set up last night? It started up kind of like right through the middle. And then when, when it was choppy, it was right through the middle of the racetrack. And it started widening out. And there was, you know, a handful of, full of guys that, you know, got a good set of nuts behind them that were actually going above it. And it kind of packed the cushion down and made the thing roll up and just make a really big berm around the track. Because, you know, through the middle, it was choppy. And then every, you know, people started moving up above it. And it really started packing the, the berm down and get it smoothed out and just created a big berm for everybody to just go up there and lean on. Hey, you know, I agree with you. you could, if you if you rolled the bottom nice and slow, you could get a good launch. And, and like you're saying, if, if you had the nut sack, man, to get up there and, and run the cushion, you could get a real good launch for, for sure, man. It may it was good racy track last night. Now, taking all that into account, what are you thinking about going in into your heat race tonight? Have you kind of played that heat race out in your mind? I know we don't know where you're starting. You know, no pill draws have taken place or anything tonight. But if you kind of played out after watching the racing last night, uh, what you kind of want to do? You know, we we really get, we just got to get the thing to get some forward drive. You know, if we got to run the bottom, it's fine. But usually, if you get the car like just a good balance where it'll run the bottom. There's times where if there's a big curb, you can just blast it and have the curb just help turn you. <laughs> so really, you just gotta you gotta play it out. And either you can't set it up to run just the bottom, you can't set it up to run just the top. You kind of you kind of need both groups because it looks like in order to pass. You know, sometimes you had to kind of run the bottom, especially when you get up to lap traffic. So you got right. you got to get things just nice and balanced. Now, speaking of the, of the balance, we know you got the adjustments in car for shocks and things like that. Are, are you one of the guys that run the run the in car in cockpit adjustments? Yeah, I get both my rear shocks are cockpit adjustable. Okay, and, and that's pretty much fine tuning. You know, I mean, you can dial yourself out, but you can dial yourself in over the course of an event. But have you thought about that where you're going to go with your basic settings and then uh, you know, the range of adjustability that you'll have in it out on the track? I mean, we're, we, we've got a different shock than what we use on the right rear than what we normally run. So that's really the only thing different. Everything else is set up that we put on a car to go to damn near every racetrack. So we just go out there and hot lap it and see how it is and just judge what we need to do to the car depending on the heat race we're in. That's what I love about Jolton Joe Liguori, man. He he just he shows up at, at the Rumble in Fort Wayne with a, with a car and and he parts that he's always run takes it to the Chili Bowl, man. He, he he's just a racer, man. He, he's just going to drive around what the car does. Uh, that's what I like about you, man. You just you drive through everything. You don't worry too much about it. You know what I mean? You get it close and and then it's time to mm -hmm. get the elbows up and and race the damn car. All right, now looking at the uh, racing last night, I was talking to Shane Goldick about this a little bit. We've seen Brian Clawson. Uh, come from the back and, and be able to work his way through the field on a racy track. And then in the A feature last night, uh, we seen uh, Kyle Larson come from, you know, whatever it was, 16th or 17th to 5th. And mm -hmm. then Timez was up on the wheel and come from 20th to like 6th or 7th. So does that give you a little bit of confidence going into the night that if you're if you're towards the back that you'll be able to work your way forward? Yeah, I mean, like I said, you just got to have the car right and you got to have, have the chili bull luck on your side, and, you know. Timez was leading his heat race, kind of checked out and started having engine trouble and fell back. It kind of buried him in qualifiers. So it was one of them deal where you got to keep everything, everything going just 100% and just and then the luck will come to you then. That, that, there you go. I, I agree. There's a lot of luck there. All right. Uh, what are you thinking about, man? Put, 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 put some hands out there in your mindset. Um, you know, what, what, what are you, I know you're getting ready to head to the track, but, uh, you know, for the rookie stripers and for the fans out there, what's your mindset right now heading out, heading uh, to the building? Uh, my mindset, really just go there and get the tires ready and just sit and twiddle my thumbs until we get ready to go race. I mean, that's what that's what <laughs> we're here to do. I mean, I, I think we got a good ride. We just got to have the luck on our side, go out there and do what we came to do. I think you'll be fine out there tonight, man. I'm looking forward to it. And, and uh, any butterflies, being as this is your uh, first preliminary night at the Chili Bowl? No, I mean I've it, yeah, it's my first first chili bowl, but I always look at every race as just just another race and go out there and 
no matter who's there, you're you're got to be the one that you know everybody's got to be the one to beat you. Not not you're not that you're looking to beat them. They're the ones that have to beat you. That's how how I always look at it. I mean, I know I ain't the greatest thing in the world, but I always look at it like that, and we expect you know the best of everything every time. I, I I agree with that 100 percent, man. Just don't beat yourself. That's 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 basically what it boils down to. If you just go out and execute, uh, usually you'll end up fine, especially big races like this. All right, um, I I don't, you know, tomorrow is is a pretty big day for you, man. You're going racing tonight. You're going to have a long day today, but uh, tomorrow's a pretty big day. You want to let everybody out there know what's going on. Yeah, t- tomorrow's my wife's birthday. She was she wasn't able to come out today. She'll be out here tomorrow, so. We just got to get through the night. Hopefully we have a really good night and we'll be able to definitely celebrate tomorrow because, you know, she was wanting to be here tonight, but then she's come out on her birthday. We got to go out and it's going to be a really long night. So Friday morning is going to be tough on us. <laughs> I probably won't get an answer for the Friday morning phone call, huh? Yeah, I mean, it, it probably a little afternoon. You'd probably be all right. <laughs> there you go. All right. Happy birthday, Lindsay, and, and have a safe flight. Is she flying out, Joe? No, she's driving out actually because uh, yeah, I mean, it's cheaper to drive than it is to fly, really. So, may have to make have her uh, come through Evansville pick me up, man. I, I you know, I I I, I should have went out to the Chili Bowl this year. That's that's all there is to it. But uh, at any rate, man, um, it's come that time. Let's. Uh, I've asked you every day, but let, let's. They deserve to be uh, mentioned every day. Who's writing checks to get you out there this year, man? Uh, I got a uh, Randall Williams and Wally Sexton helping us out. CNR Racing, Brown and Miller Racing Solutions, Henchman Racewear, Bell Helmet, American Racer Tires. They've been, you know, helping us out for a long time. So we're just keeping the guys on board and doing what we're supposed to do with them. Uh, you know, I, you just you you put a question into my mind, jo- my mind, Joe. American Racer versus Hoosier. Let's hear it. Yeah, the, the the price is a, is the biggest thing. But man, I really like the American Racer because on a Hoosier sometimes. You know, with the amount of heat cycles, sometimes they'll give up on you just randomly. And like American Racer, man, the harder you lean on it, the better they get. You know, that's why that's why in the Silver Crown Division, the USAC's getting a little upset with American Racers because Hoosier gives them more money, but American Racer's a better tire. There you go. You heard it from Jolton Joe Ligori, the Hoosier American Racer battle. I, I'm I'm going to stay out of this one, Joe. No, oh, that's fine. I'll, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'll leave this one on you, man. Uh, I, I agree. I like American racers myself personally, but, you know, it, Hoosier's got the lock on everything, it seems like. But at any rate, man, um, what? At, once you run your night tonight and you run your races out and, and we'll we'll see how it all plays out at about 11 or 12 o'clock tonight, um, what, what's going to be what we'll have to see where you end up and everything. But if everything plays out in your mind the way you want it to, uh, you know, you're partying tomorrow night with Lindsay for her birthday. Come Friday, what happens? Friday, just get the car cleaned up and hopefully get it ready for, for to not really have to be at the track too early. I mean, if we we put her in the A main tonight, and run up front, we'll be good good for Saturday. You know, like maybe you have to do an alphabet, or you know, if we get lucky enough, we just got to sit around for the A. That that'd be the that'd be the prime way to go, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, man. We're going to get out of here and let you eat your breakfast sandwich and and uh, get to. You can't holler at Lindsay to make you a sandwich, man. She's all the way back here in Indiana, so you got to make your own sandwich this morning. That's right. <laughs> all right, man. We're going to get out of here and we'll check in with you tomorrow. And uh, uh, good luck tonight. Keep at least the right rear on the ground, brother. Oh yeah, thanks, man. All right, man. There you have it. That's Mister Jolton Joe Lagori out at the 2014 Chili Bowl Nationals. And uh, we'll catch up with him tomorrow. Hopefully he has a good night tonight. I think he will, man. He's got the right mindset. He's got the right crew. He's got the right car. I, th- I think he's going to be good to go. But we'll be right back after these messages. Three, four. If you're a gearhead, you probably go online to those hot rod superstores, drooling over the chrome and speed goodies until you find just the right item for your muscle car, tuner car, or truck. But what do you do when it comes to fixing the mom mobile? If you're like most do-it-yourselfers, you head to the strip-all parts store and talk to the Do you want fries with that kid behind the counter? Hold on, Bunky! Did you stop to think where those chain stores are getting the parts that you're installing in the vehicle that's used to transport your family everywhere? They get the cheapest suppliers they can find to sell you the parts at bargain prices. Their limited lifetime warranties? What a joke! Remember the last time Mom's car broke down? You heard about that one for weeks. Don't take that chance again. 
Excelsior Racing has the quality parts you need for your family vehicle. Parts that you can install knowing you're getting the best for your family. Excelsior Racing. Quality parts. Personalized service. Affordable pricing. Fast to you direct. Excelsior Racing. Online at ExcelsiorRacing.com or call 502-909-2034. All right, race fans, Chili Bowl fans, I, I, you know, dogs, cats. I think that's the only audience we have nowadays, my dog and my cat. But at any rate, man, we're back here for the On the Cushion Media Group, Burning Rubber Radio, uh, Indie Race Parts, Chili Bowl Spotlight. That's a lot of words, man. I can't believe I can get them all out on the Performance Motorsports Network. And we have somebody that had me on the edge of my seat screaming at my computer last night on the RacingBoys.com broadcast. And, and, uh, uh, I, I don't know if it helped him or hurt him, man. We're going to find out here in just a second. But uh, we got Shane the Throttle Coddle, fresh off his Chili Bowl preliminary night and uh, breakfast in his belly. How you doing this morning, Throttle? We're doing good. <laughs> that was nice and simple. We're doing good. <laughs> now you, you just you, you just had breakfast, but you said your head's hurting a little bit, man. And uh, uh, I. I the way you were wheeling that car last night, you probably got some sort of concussion or something, man. <laughs> I think it's a mixture of fumes and alcohol. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. I was waiting on you to open that door, but since we're there, man, uh, we'll get to the racing in a minute. Tell me about the celebrations last night, man. That sounds like an interesting story. Or is that just better uh, left in Tulsa? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's all fun, you know, after, you know, every, all the drivers go out and just play around and play pool and, crack up and just have a good time all right all right we'll leave we'll leave what happens in tulsa in tulsa man you'll have to tell me about it off air sometime man and, and uh we'll hear about what kind of trouble you got in out there but uh let's talk about it man let's start off uh let's kind of break the night down if you don't mind shane we'll, we'll break it down uh between uh heat race the qualifier and the feature but first of all what i want to start out with is uh track conditions last night tell me what you thought about the track because there's a lot of guys talking and uh, there's a lot of talk about the berm and there's a lot of talk about the way the cushion set up last night. So give me your uh, perspective on track conditions last night. Uh, the the berm is actually, it's almost like it's taller or something. It's hard to run. But uh, the the track was really hard and, and slick. And it had a, had a nice little cushion where you could, you know, tool right around there. And, but uh, if you was out of the out of the groove, it was really slick. It's almost like they've done something different to the dirt or something where, no, it's it's totally different than it was last year. Now you say that, and that makes that makes sense, Shane. You're the first one today that said that you know maybe said that something's different with the dirt, and we've seen the cushion set up a little different last night. It, it kind of started out in the middle, kind of moved up a little bit, but then it stopped, and it just kind of like turned into a big rut, a big wall, or or for lack of a better term, a berm on the outside. Uh, it never moved out, you know, towards the wall like we usually see it do on dirt tracks. Um, it, it, did you notice that last night in the car or am I just seeing things from the broadcast? No, it, it, it actually, it, uh, I think what happens maybe is whenever they push everybody off, they push you from the top side and it just really packs the, you know, the cushion in up there and it makes it hard to push it up. So, I mean, that's, that's the only way I could think of it, but it was, uh, it was getting a little closer to the wall and wide the track was widening out. So. It got pretty racy last night. That's a fact. All right, let's 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 start off with your heat race, man. You and Tyler Courtney, uh, Sunshine, put on quite a, quite a, a little race there in the heat race, man. Uh, uh, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we, uh, we neither one of us, he, he got up on the berm and, uh, and didn't get a very good start. And then and I, did, I did the same thing. And then, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a pretty good race. I just... Uh, I knew I was going to run second because my car was just a little bit free. We, we chased it all night long trying to get it tight enough, and we didn't want to get it too tight. But it was, it was, uh, we just wanted to finish second, you know, and get the points and move on to the qualifier. You know, it's funny you say that because that's kind of what I was thinking. You know, at, at, with about three or four to go in that heat rate, you kind of settled in. You know what I mean? Right there, you really didn't push the car hard. And I was thinking to myself, okay, he's just going to, he's going to take the second here, and we're going to move on to the qualifier. Now, we move on to the qualifier, man, and uh, I don't know if it was me hollering at you to stretch it, stretch it. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised the police didn't call it, get called, man, because I was yelling at my computer. I was like, get on it, Shane. Elbows up. Stretch it. And you and you pulled out there, and then we had to caution, restart, and, and things like that. But tell me about the qualifier, how that 
set up for you and, and, and how'd the car feel uh, then? Did you guys get it dialed in a little better? Obviously you did, but what was some of the things that you done to it? Uh, we just tightened it up in uh, a little bit. And like I say, it's a, it's an experimental car, so we're, we're not quite sure how far to go with anything yet. And, and uh, we're just kind of sneaking up on it. And, you know, the car was really good in the, in the qualifier. And, uh, so we didn't, we didn't make a lot of changes for it, for the feature because the track was going to be kind of the same, but we just didn't go far enough. That, now we talked a little bit about your, the incidents on Monday with the brakes. Have, it seems like you may have those dialed in a little bit or, or are you still guys still a little off on that, on that new system that you no, guys are using? Yeah, we got, we got that fixed up and, uh, you know, luckily it's didn't lock it up and stick it in the wall like Monday. <laughs> we don't want no more of that, man. We're not talking about that stuff no more. Uh, I, I, that's, that's just bad luck, isn't it? That's kind of like saying the yeah. R word at an outdoor race, isn't it? Um, <laughs> we, now, you, then you got a little break after the qualifier and they run the race of champions. Did you learn anything uh, during that race that that uh, you tried that maybe you wanted to try to work on for the future? Um, well, what we was trying to figure out was we was we seen some people running low and high and there was, you know, Kevin and uh, Tracy Hines were running on the bottom and, you know, they were picking off the cars pretty quick, but, uh, it reworked the track. So we kind of basically set up for the top side and, and, uh, that was going to be our game plan is just roll around the top all night because the bottom was going away. Do you see that changing as the week goes on? Uh, I mean, I know we're going to head into the second night of racing tonight, so we'll, we'll have a little better info. Uh, uh, you know, you and the team have a little better info to base things on as the week plays out. But do you see the track doing pretty much the same thing tonight that it done last night? Yeah, I'd almost say that they might tonight uh, dig it up a little. It was really hard from the start last night, and we knew it was going to kind of get slick. So they might try to dig it up a little bit more and get some more water in it and uh, see what it does. Now, what do you do in, in circumstances like that, Shane? For the rookie stripers out there, you know, that don't normally follow midget racing, you know, we've got a lot of NASCAR fans, uh, which is primarily what we do. But for, for those those type of fans that's used to that, what are some of the things that you can do to the car? When you say the track got hard, um, you're talking about how hard it got packed in and the, and the car has a really hard time biting. Uh, what what are some of the things? Do you mess with, with uh, tire grooving? And I know you got your shock adjustments and things like that. But what are some of the basic things that you can do uh, to combat that, uh, you can you can change the bars and the springs in the front and and you know like wheel spacing and air pressure and definitely the tire grooving is is kind of a key on you know trying to get a, the grip and you definitely got to have new tires for you know every time you hit the track especially here with you know everybody's if you go out on used tires you know it's you're you're gonna be a tenth or two off so it's a little rough uh, on on that isn't it um, yeah. Now we've been we we always hear about shocks, no matter the race and the shocks, and we know it's chili bowl. It's pretty important, and you got the in car adjustment, uh, you know, where you can adjust your shocks throughout the race. And and I know a lot of fans have a hard time grasping that you guys are actually doing shock adjustments with your front ends in the air and all torqued out on that little bitty track. But you are. Um, have you played around much with your shock adjustments last night during the uh, e during either the heat, the qualifier, or your feature? Um, yeah, I did um, in the in the qual or in the feature. I did, but uh, we just had one uh, one yellow, and and then after that, it was if you want to do it seriously, you gotta gotta have a yellow. But you can mo monkey with them and just guess where you're at whenever you're racing. But, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of short little track, so it's hard to just grab on and do it. But we do. Our now, the check seemed like it got a little bit choppy, and, and that goes back to Monday. And, and I know we said we weren't going to talk about that anymore, but let's go back to Monday and the hole that developed in one and two. Did they get that problem figured out? And then the secondary part of that question is we've seen a little time frame there where the track got a little choppy last night, but it, but it come back around, like you said, and widened out and got real racy. Did you see any issues with that same spot in turns one and two, or did, did they take care of that? Uh, they actually took care of the one that was in one, and uh, there was one that developed in uh, coming off of turn two, and there was one off of turn four that was was kind of digging up a hole. But uh, you know, it's just you know where they're at, and you just kind of try to miss them. 
There you go. It, I I know what you're saying, it, and it was our, it, the one on turn four. I, I guess I want to ask you, Shane, just for my own clarification. Coming off turn four, it was it up high where where that high line was, and you know where everybody was up against the cushion right there, where it was really dug in, almost like a motocross uh, uh, track rut. Is that where it was at? I seen a lot of front ends bouncing right there. Yeah, that's exactly where it was. It was like it we was talking about the cushion not moving up. That's where it. Uh, you know, everybody just kept running, just kept digging a hole and hole and kind of made a little groove through there. All right. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at the points today to see where you're sitting at in points as far as that goes. I don't know if you have either. Have you had a chance to know where you're sitting at for the week so far after after last night? Uh, the points are over after your preliminary night. It'll go based on uh, your finishing order. So I will probably start uh, uh, third row inside of the first B main on okay. Saturday. Okay, that, now that that is awesome news, man. I wasn't quite sure whether you made it to the A last night or not. To be honest with you, um, it's like I was telling you in pre. I, I kind of missed the fe- the the feature last night. Um, but uh, going into that, now let's let's talk about Saturday night because that's the next time you're on the track. Um, you got a really good draw. Then you're starting in the first B main, so you don't have to deal with the whole alphabet soup. And for those of uh, of you out there listening that don't know what the alphabet soup is, you will become very, very versed in alphabet soup come Saturday when we talk. But uh, anyway, to simplify it, Shane, you start. You only got to go through a B main and, and transfer out of that into the A. Is is that? Are you in your comfort zone, even though you didn't make it to the A, having to run the B? Uh, you know, it, it's a lot better just to have to run the B. But it's, uh, you know, whenever you you get in that B, you got to have your A game on because it's going to be loaded with you know top drivers and cars and. It's still going to be tough, you know, just just to make the race. But uh, you're never comfortable until the until the B main's over. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. I like your chances, man. I, I, you're starting up front in that B main, so I kind of like your chances. I and I totally understand what you're saying. You know, we're, we're going to have uh, cars transferring up through the soup on Saturday, and and that B main is going to be uh, it'd be it'd be a hell of an A main anywhere else. That, that's a fact. But. Um, any any hindsights? Any thoughts? Put us in the in the throttle's mind uh, now that you've had a chance to uh, wake up a little bit. Your head's pounding from uh, partying last night, which is nothing unusual with you, man. Listen to me making you sound like an alcoholic, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, but that's not a fact, man. But, you know, but at any rate, man, you, you've had a chance to sleep on it a little bit. We always talk about hindsight being twenty twenty. Tell me about what uh, your your hindsight says about last night, man. Uh, you know, I think if we. Uh the the car owner he asked me before I went out if what I wanted to do for stagger wise and and I picked the the wrong tire basically so we should have went the other way and we'd have been a little better I think and that's uh other than that I think we'd have been fine that'd work now can I, I want to ask you a, a question I don't know if you'll answer or not and uh, um but but I'm gonna ask it you may throw me under the bus you're 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 pretty good about throwing me under the bus and calling me out when I don't give you your props man but uh, um. <laughs> You got to keep me in check, you know what I mean? But uh, mm-hmm. looking, you know, I, this is a, this is a purely. I, I don't even like asking this question, but I, I know that a lot of fans are talking about it. Swindells and the race champions last night uh, never made it through the pack. BC run up through the pack, and then we seen T. Mez and Larson do it um, in the A feature last night. T. Mez was on the on top of the wheel big time in that feature last night. But at any rate. Uh, you know, the masses out there are making a big deal out of the Swindells not running very good in the race champions. They started in the back, finished in the back. Do you read anything into that? No, not at all. I mean, uh, they'll, uh, Sammy's a smart individual and he'll have it figured out by the time, uh, you know, Saturday comes. And, and I, uh, I agree with they'll you. They'll be right up there in front again. I agree with you. I don't, I just don't think they pushed too hard last night. It was only for 2,500 bucks, you know, and, and there's a lot bigger deal. You know that, that yeah, I, it was more of a test session than anything. I would think, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. All right, Sammy man. Sammy has actually been having a little trouble with his engine. So. Oh really? That's that's some, I, nobody's ever even talked about that. They, they, you know, you going back to that yesterday. Uh, Tyler Courtney, you know, he was running good uh, in in the in the. Uh, um, uh, I believe it was a feature, wasn't it? Wasn't he running third and then the motor conked out uh-huh. on him? And then uh, we seen, I think, Larson had to change a motor yesterday, too, didn't he? Uh, he? He had to change something. I don't know what it was. So okay. It was, 
do you, do you, uh, do you read anything into that? Because I mean, I don't know, Shane. You tell me, man. From an insider's perspective, is there usually a lot of that going on out there? I mean, I, you know, when we're at the local tracks, we always see guys thrashing at the last minute at the Rumble. I was thrashing with you know trying to get Rich Kurson's car. You know, all the bugs he had going on up at the Rumble. But you know, we always see that at the local level. But um, you know, come Chili Bowl time, you know, some of these bigger names having issues. That's that's kind of uh, kind of a little different, isn't it? Yeah, it's. Uh, I've actually seen more trouble this year out here than I have in the past. You know, few years that I've been here, I've. You know, there's a lot of guys that actually have blown motors and they've had to scratch. So it's. Uh, you think that's it's just from? Do you think that's from people pushing, like you guys going out there with an experiment? You know, everything that you guys are doing different this year. Do you think it's just the way people are are kind of pushing the envelope these days, or? Or, uh, I think, think it is. They're, they're they're just making everything so light, you know. They're trying to. They're even building lightweight motors and you know titanium cranks and rods and whatever, and, and it's just it's just biting them in the butt. Gotcha, gotcha, man. Gonna have to find that fine line, won't they? You know, it, it either, like you said, either bite you in the butt, you're either a hero or zero when you do that kind of stuff. That's a fact, man. All right, um, we've we've kind of reached that time. I've kept you on the phone an awful long time today, Shane. I know you're not feeling well, man, between the fumes and and it's not really alcohol related, man. I'm just I'm giving the throttle a hard time. I don't want anybody out there thinking he's an alcoholic or something. <laughs> but uh, um, you know, uh, that's that's another thing too. Uh, just real quick, Shane, before we get out of here, uh, I, you're not the, you're about the fifth or sixth person I've talked to out there about the fumes in the building this year are, are a little uh, more stout than they have been in years past. Uh, have you noticed that, or is that just something that is, uh, you know, just certain people? Uh, I, go I ahead. I think it's it's just different. I think it's uh, it's just uh, you know, every year you come out here, it's uh, by the time you leave, you're just drained and. You don't have all the fumes, and it's uh, it's just a rough week, but wouldn't trade it for the world. <laughs> there it is, man. I wouldn't trade. T- Shane, you know, I, I know this is a pain in the ass, me calling you every morning, man, and, and, and talking to you, but I really appreciate it. I know the fans out there appreciate hearing from you, and you know, especially when you put on runs like, like you did last night. And I know you're not satisfied with that. You know that you wanted better, but man, you, I think you've done well. You know, you, you, for everything that happened Monday, you guys thrashed, got the car done. Uh, you know, and, and, and then to go out and do what you done last night. But, you know, hey, you picked up a win in the qualifiers, you know, so that's got to build your confidence going into Saturday. Definitely, yep. All right, man, you you you, uh, you tell Bernie uh, uh, we all said thanks here in the studios and uh, for helping us out and giving him a big pat on the back and uh, and uh, uh, buy him a beer, and then I'll have to catch you when you get back here to Indiana, man. Maybe Sprint Week we can get together and, and do some things. But uh, Sounds good. All right, man, you take care, Shane, and, and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you again. Uh, I, I don't know if we'll bother you tomorrow or not. We might leave you alone in, until uh, Saturday or something, you know what I mean, and, and uh, go from there, and uh, we'll see how you feel, man. You sound a little stopped up. That chili bowl flu, that's getting ready to happen, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's, it is. It's uh, you know, Like I say, all the fumes, dust, and alcohol, it's, it's rough on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I, you know what? I'm going to call you about 2 o'clock this morning and see what you're up to. <laughs> that might be a good interview, man. That that might be the might be a fun time. All right, man. <laughs> we've we've kind of reached that time, Shane, and, and we say it every day. But but uh, the people you're getting ready to list, uh, they deserve to be uh, a shout out every day we talk. So uh, give me that list, man. Who's writing the checks to get you out there this year? Uh, Indy Race Parts, uh, Butler Built Seats, uh, Simpson, uh, Spike Chassis, Hoosier. Um, you know, uh, the World of Outlaws at Bloomington with uh, the Farewell Steve Kinzer Tour and uh, in Toyota, you know, that's that's what we need to get out here. That'll work, man. Hey, I got a question for you. Are we going to see you maybe put a wing on the, on the car back here in Indiana for that September World Outlaw race? I am actually working a deal with that right now as we speak, so. Right on, man. When you get that put together, let me know, and we'll we'll get that out there. And one last thing, man. The the uh, fans of Shane Cottle uh, Facebook page, man, th- they're being very supportive of this show this week. So, any shout outs for uh, the people over there on that page? Oh yeah, we gotta we gotta thank everybody for you know you know listening and watching, and uh, we just uh, hopefully we can make y'all proud. By the way, man, you look pretty snazzy in your interview on uh, Racing Boys last night with Scotty Cook good deal <laughs> yeah yeah we'll see what kind of rumors get started out with me uh, uh saying something like that but all right man we're going to get out of here 
uh, and, and let you go, man. I know you're on the way to the track. Enjoy yourself the next couple of days, and, and I'll send you some texts and stuff and check in with you. But we'll leave you alone for a couple of days here and let you enjoy the experience. How's that sound? All right. All right, man. Thanks a lot, Shane. And we'll talk to you again, uh, you know, sometime this week. But at any rate, man, uh, stay safe out there and, and have some fun. All right. We'll do it. Appreciate it. All right, and there you have it, man. Shane the Throttle Coddle. You've seen him put on a show out at the 2014 Chili Bowl Nationals. He's not satisfied yet. He's still hunger, the, the hungry. The fire's burning deep, man, so watch for him Saturday. And uh, we'll be back right after these, these commercials. If you're a gearhead, you probably go online to those hot rod superstores, drooling over the chrome and speed goodies until you find just the right item for your muscle car, tuner car, or truck. But what do you do when it comes to fixing the mom mobile? If you're like most do-it-yourselfers, you head to the strip all parts store and talk to the Do you want fries with that kid behind the counter? Hold on, Bunky! Did you stop to think where those chain stores are getting the parts that you're installing in the vehicle that's used to transport your family everywhere? They get the cheapest suppliers they can find to sell you the parts at bargain prices. Their limited lifetime warranties? What a joke! Remember the last time mom's car broke down? You heard about that one for weeks. Don't take that chance again. Excelsior Racing has the quality parts you need for your family vehicle. Parts that you can install knowing you're getting the best for your family. Excelsior Racing. Quality parts. Personalized service. Affordable pricing. Fast to you direct. Excelsior Racing. Online at ExcelsiorRacing.com or call 502-909-2034. All right, Chili Bowl Race fans, there you have it. Another show in the can, day three from the 2014 Chili Bowl Nationals. Uh, this big shout out to Bernie at, at Indy Race Parts for helping making this happen, and and all the racers involved. Uh, Shane the Throttle Coddle, Shane Golbick, uh, Joe Lagori, uh, Sheldon Hodenshield, and uh, Rich Foreman. Um, really, really appreciate everything that they do for us, uh, making this show uh, uh, happen. Really appreciate it. Like I said, uh, you heard it throughout the uh, show today. Big stories that berm and, and the way the cushion's setting up. Uh, track's really hard, really slick. We'll see what they do today for track preps. But once again, Joe Ligori and uh, Shane Golbick roll off tonight for uh, their, their racing uh, nights out at the Chili Bowl. So get over to racingboys.com. Racingboys.com is 25 bucks a night or 99 bucks for the week. Uh, I'm sure the weekly rate's discounted, discounted now after since the first night's over. And then once again, the feature will be on Mav TV uh, Saturday night. So. Uh, you guys can get over there and check that out. Uh, any, you know, there's a lot of people paying attention to this, especially on the Shane Golbick uh, fans and the Shane Cottle fans, Joe Ligori fans, uh, for that matter, too. Uh, a lot of you are paying attention and checking these shows out. If there is any questions that you want to ask these guys or, or questions that you'd like to be asked, information that you want, or uh, anything like that, feel free to send me a message over there on Facebook on the dirty on my Dirty Dan page, or or uh, comment on any of the links where the show links are put out, and uh, I'll be sure to ask them for you, man. Let, let's you know we can keep the fans uh, integrated in the show and and uh, get you guys the information that you want because after all, that's why we're doing it is for you, the fans. So uh, you know, like I said, any information that you guys may want or need or or questions you want to ask, send me a message, and, and I'll be more than glad to ask them. It, it, it actually, it'd be pretty cool. <laughs> so, um, other than that, man, uh, we got some surprises lined up for some shows later on this week. We're going to be talking to a couple racers that we haven't been following this week. Um, some old names, some old friends, some people that uh, I followed before, and we've done some stuff with it on the Cushion Media Group. Um, you guys can kind of put two and two together and figure that out. Uh, but we'll be talking to them later on in the week. And then, of course, Sunday we'll have the wrap-up show. But uh, overall, I have to say, after the first night of racing out there in Tulsa, I'm pretty impressed with the way things went. The track was really racy. Looks like it's going to be a good week. Uh, in talking to uh, uh, the Throttle and, and jump, uh, Jumpin' Joe and, and Shane, we've got to come up with a nickname for him. So um, it seems like it's going to be a pretty, pretty good competitive week. Uh, things have changed up a little bit out there this year as far as what the drivers are seeing with the track. Uh, you heard uh, the throttle talk about that a little bit in his interviews. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, uh, one of the Swindells are racing tonight. Sammy is. So we'll see uh, if last night was just a fluke or uh, whether they're on their game or not. I personally think that, that they didn't really put much stock into that, starting at the back, knowing that there's uh, bigger fish to fry. So I don't think that's a story at all. What I do think is a story is that berm uh, down around the inside of the track, and I think that that's going to be 
uh, play a key storyline in, in how this week plays out. Um, other than that, man, it, it, I want to really thank all you, the fans, for, for supporting what we're doing here. Uh, we're low budget, low tech, uh, but we try, man. We're just trying to get you, the fans, some a little different content than what you get everywhere else. We're not trying to outdo anybody. Uh, we're just trying to to uh, to to augment. I, you know, I can't even think of the word that I want to use. We're just we're just trying to bring you something a little different and and uh, let you connect with these drivers. So once again, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything, feel free to post them on the links or send me a message on Facebook at Dirty Dan Smith. Uh, pretty easy to find, or on the Cushion Media Group fan page or uh, Burning Rubber fan page, Performance Motorsports Network. Any of those uh, would be pretty cool. So. Uh, we'll get you involved in the show. Other than that, I'm going to get out of here for the day, get this sent off so we can get it aired on PMN today. Look for the archive link. Uh, we missed putting the show out on archive yesterday, so that will be coming out. Yesterday's show will be coming out on an archive link later today also. I apologize for that. Uh, we had some technical uh, Internet connection issues uh, yesterday afternoon. So, once again, I apologize for that. Other than that, this has been another show of the Indy Race Parts Chili Bowl Spotlight, and we'll be uh, we'll see you about the same time tomorrow. Thanks a lot for your support.